Hello everyone and welcome back to the 2020 Tata Steel Masters edition. It's a world champion Magnus Carlsen versus the winner of the last year's uh, Challengers edition of the Tata Steel uh, tournament Vladislav Kovalev. And uh, Magnus had a slow start to the tournament. Uh, he started with seven draws but then he got two wins in a row. Uh, one a very important one in the video we've shown uh, uh, la well in uh, the last video we've shown against Alireza Firuzja and now uh, Kovalev uh, has, a, has an immense task in front of him uh, to, to play the world champion with the black pieces so without further ado uh, let's check out the game <clears throat> uh, magnus opens with d4 uh, we have knight to f6 by kovalev uh, c4 we have e6 knight to f3 and d5 transposing into the queen's gambit declined uh, we have knight to c3 and bishop to e7 uh, bishop to g5 by magnus we have castles uh, and e3 now uh, we have h6 pushing the bishop back, uh, bishop to f4, and now uh, c5. So uh, going uh, uh, going immediately for the center, we have d captures on c5 by Magnus, bishop captures, and now a3. So all, all fairly standard st stuff. We have knight to c6, and now queen to c2. Getting the queen out of the way, preparing to, to, to bring the rook to d1. Uh, we have knight to h5 going after uh, Carlsen's bishop, bishop to g3. And now there is one game in the database where d4 was played, but here uh, we have d captures on c4 by Kovalev, and it is as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. So what, uh, what happens next? Uh, Magnus, of course, captures, he develops... Uh, uh, by, by capturing, now he can just castle kingside with bishop back to e7. Uh, and bishop back to a2 now. Uh, it will be uh, a much safer square for the bishop, as you are expecting when this bishop is developed, the rook is probably coming to c8, so uh, it is uh, useful to just uh, get the bishop away. So we have a6, uh, and now rook to d1, with an attack on the queen, queen to a5, and now uh, bishop back to b1. So here uh, Magnus is a threatening mate, <clears throat> And you have to figure out how to defend it. And it's a very, very important moment in the game uh, since it's only move 15. And what would you play here? Well, you could go g6 or you could go f5. Uh, another idea is to go queen to f5, uh, but then, then queen c1 just exposes the, the, the queen to the bishop. And then who, who knows what happens next. So here g6 is probably the best way to defend this. Although even this weakens the king's side. Kovalev, on the other hand, decided to play f5. And this could be problematic. He puts his pawns on light squares. He still hasn't developed his light square bishop, which means that you will have problems bringing this rook into the game. It really weakens, uh, uh, well, the, the light the light squares in front of the king. And Magnus has a very clear way of how to how to bust open the position. So here, Magnus just castles, uh, and you could argue that okay, maybe I should keep my king in the center since uh, this knight probably will never capture, as this will give me a semi-open h file. But Magnus decides to ca uh, to, to castle, uh, says that he has enough compensation to to to, to start attacking. Knight captures on g3, uh, we have h captures on g3, and now bishop to f6, putting the bishop to a uh, to this nice diagonal, maybe even with ideas of capturing on c3. Uh, and, of course, uh, Magnus just pushes e4. He wants to open up this diagonal and hopefully checkmate Kovalev. Uh, we have, uh, here, the situation on the clock is uh, an hour and 20 minutes for Magnus and 40 minutes for Kovalev. So, uh, after some consideration, he plays bishop captures on c3. Uh, gets uh, rid of uh, one of the uh, one of the pieces that could very easily enter the attack, and uh, if if for example something like captures captures happens, he can always or even if uh, even if uh, uh, only the white pawn ends up on, on f5 somewhere, he can always uh, create a blockade with rook to f6. So here b captures on c3, uh, saying that okay, I'm not really interested in the a3 pawn, and uh, here Kovalev probably should go for knight to e5, but it's. Uh, uh, not an easy line to calculate for example knight captures queen captures now rook f to e1 getting the rook in front of the queen queen back to f6 and now bishop to a2 putting pressure on this pawn here since it's pinned uh, king h7 unpinning and now rook to d6 again uh, putting pressure here the idea is just captures on f6 uh, on f5 and after queen to e7 you unpin with an attack against the rook so here probably e5 is the way to go and then you sort of survive the attack and continue playing in, in a worse position but uh, 
that's one way to do it. Uh, Kovalev, on the other hand, decides he's going to go for queen captures on a3. He says, uh, he, his plan is, I'm going to survive this attack and then I'm going to have a nice pawn and start pushing it. Uh, we have uh, e captures on f5 by Magnus, e captures on f5 and then now rook f to e1. So here, indeed, if you can somehow get your pieces into the game, uh, maybe prevent uh, white from opening up this diagonal, you, you definitely will enjoy this uh, extra pawn uh, if you're able to start pushing it down the board. So here we have queen back to a5, now again adding another defender to the pawn here, preparing to bring the queen back here. At some point you are uh, you are going to have to play g6 or g5, so the queen from c7 will be, will be guarding the 7th rank. So here uh, Kovalev is already down to 21 minutes on the clock, whereas Magnus is an hour and 15 minutes on the clock. And there are... There are two ways you could go about it. You could go rook d6, uh, and then after, let's say, queen c7, uh, bring the queen to d2 and continue playing this way. Uh, but that means uh, giving up on the plan of using this diagonal for attack. So Magnus decides to keep uh, keep at it. He pushes g4. Uh, well, not not when the rook is on d6. He pushes g4 instead. He wants to open up this uh, diagonal and now queen to c7. And now if you capture here, you can't uh, uh, open it up right away. Because if captures, captures, then uh, once you lose the light square bishop... <clears throat> Uh, could be could be dangerous uh, for black as black is up a pawn, so you have to be you have to be careful. Uh, so after queen c7, Magnus just brings a third attacker to the f7 pawn. Well, <clears throat> a fourth attacker, if you will. Knight to h4, and now uh, Kovalev says, "Okay, there is no defending the pawn here. Uh, we have to defend with our queen." Uh, so here we have g5 attacking the knight. Knight captures on f5, bishop captures, we have g captures on f5, and now creating a blockade with rook to f6, like we discussed. So now uh, it's uh, very unlikely that this pawn will be able to move, but there are other nice diagonals Magnus can use. So we have rook to e6 now, uh, again hoping to either captures and then captures, which will once again open up the, the diagonal, or force uh, black to deal with this threat. So here we have rook a to f8, and now uh, Magnus decides for rook captures on f6, uh, basically instantly. Uh, another idea was bishop to a2, just uh, <clears throat> uh, shifting the bishop to the diagonal where the bishop belongs, and after king to h7, then queen to e4, and it will be extremely hard for, for black to make a move. But instead, after this, uh, uh, well, rook a to f8, Magnus captured on f6, uh, and now rook captures on f6 with bishop to a2 with check, king f8, and now queen to d3. Uh, probably uh, Magnus didn't want to overanalyze it as uh, Kovalev is very low on time. He doesn't want uh, Kovalev to, to analyze uh, on Carlsen's time. So here Kovalev is uh, 10 minutes on the clock, around 10 minutes on the clock. Uh, we have knight to e5 attacking the queen and now queen to e4 uh, again waiting to see what Kovalev will do uh, there is not there, there aren't there isn't all that uh, much to do uh, and the the clock is running so here Kovalev played rook to d6 it's the strongest move recommended by the engine and it's uh <clears throat> It's good that he played it since he's already uh, under two minutes on the clock. So here Magnus has to decide whether to go rook to e1, you don't want to trade of course, uh, or queen to b4. Both the options uh, have their merits. So if rook to e1, uh, just uh, threatening to win the knight, uh, you don't really have a good reply to this. For example, you could go uh, knight f7, but then just queen e8 check, king to g7, and bishop captures on f7. And here uh, Magnus just wins. For example, if captures... Uh, you can go rook to e7. So after rook to e1, you can't really move the knight. You're probably gonna have to play something else, but there's there really isn't anything else to play. Uh, if you don't move it, you're gonna lose it. So rook to e1 is definitely the move to go. Uh, Magnus, however, decides for queen to b4, saying that, okay, this is just as winning. And okay, king to e7, and now uh, Magnus continues with f6 check. Of course, you wanna remove the, one of the defenders of the rook, so, uh, of course, that's not possible. King to d7 is played, and only now rook to e1. And here, uh, what do you play? Uh, again, there is not much to do here. Uh, the knight is under attack. You can't really move it. The bishop nicely slices over uh, the, the, the light square diagonal. Uh, if you play something like knight to d3 to attack the, the, the queen and the, the rook, it doesn't really work. Just rook e7 check. You attack the queen, the king and the queen. King d8, and now, of course, you don't capture and allow captures. You just move the queen. Queen b3, 
And now there, there is no defense against queen g8 mate and also rook captures on c7 just winning the queen. So here you would probably have to give up uh, the, the queen, but you lose either way. Uh, another option after Ma uh, Carlson's rook to e1 is to go rook to d2. Uh, now the queen uh, guards the knight. However, now just queen e7 check. And if king moves, then you just pick up the knight. Uh, and it's not a problem. If some rook d1 check, there are no tricks as the rook is blocking uh, uh, the, the queen's influence on the h2 square. So here, after rook to e1, uh, we have rook captures on f6 by Kovalev, uh, but that of course doesn't work, and of course uh, all of you know why. Uh, but just in case, feel free to pause the video and try to figure out why rook captures on f6 doesn't work. Well, i give you a couple of seconds, wish I had my, my uh, glass of water here. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, picking up hanging pieces. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to d4 with check, adding another attacker to the knight. And here you just uh, lose the knight. There is no way around it. So here Kovalev played queen d6. Uh, queen captures on e5 was played by Magnus. Queen captures, rook captures, and now rook to c6. Going after the pawn here. But now Kovalev is up a pawn, but he is down a piece. So Magnus just uh, calmly played uh, rook to e3. <clears throat> Uh, and it was in this position on move 36 uh, that uh, Vladislav Kovalev resigned the game and uh, Magnus gets his third victory in a row, whereas uh, Kovalev uh, still still unlucky in the standings. We're definitely going to show one more game uh, in, in uh, from round uh, 10 and then we're going to discuss, discuss the standings as a very important game is being played uh, by uh, Fabiano Corona and Alireza Firuja, which, uh, ending really a crazy game which will influence the standings greatly. So yeah, here, of course, he resigns, he's uh, down a piece, there's no point in playing this against Magnus, Kovalev knows that, and of course, he resigns. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank David Golik, uh, Lance uh, Selestad, uh, Philip Schweitzer, Asaf Patir, and Lance Gibbons for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Tata Steel 2020 Masters Edition. Checking up on the Women's World Chess Championship and of course checking up on your wonderful suggestions. So thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.